The hell of a boss song when I see him tonight is masterfully crafted. In this video, I'll be analyzing the song in its entirety and really digging deep into the symbolisms behind the visuals and lyrics. Hope you guys enjoy. Here we are at the scene just before the song begins and Stolas is uh, not having a good time right now, so we might want to skip ahead about this. Normally, I do an overview of where we've got up to so far, but this is literally the start of the episode, so if you want me to explain the architecture of Stolas' house for five minutes, unfortunately, you've come to the wrong place. Anyway, we'll stop you throwing up. <laughs> You to the butterflies in my stomach. I haven't felt this nervous since I was a little fluffy down nesting my Now that's slightly a long bit to play, but to grasp the whole thing, you need the entire sentence. So he's explaining how he's got butterflies in his stomach, and he hasn't had that since he was a baby, since he was a child, when he first saw Blitz. So it calls back to the first episode of the season where we see that flashback episode, and then me and have fun or whatever. So Stolz is calling back to it, saying he hasn't felt this many butterflies since he first spoke to Blitz when he was younger, I first saw him at the circus, you know, that those bits when they first meet, first sight from Stoller's first sight from Blitz, and then they meet, you know, all those butterflies in his stomach, he's really nervous to tell Blitz about this thing, and rightfully so, because it would really get to you if you were in that situation, so it's really important to understand Stoller's situation, just because when I do eventually get to the end scene in a separate video, we can look back on this one to understand where Stoller's is coming from. Drops a lot of bombs in this song, and I don't just mean bath bombs in a second. Literal law bombs, so it's very important. Anyway, let's move on. Daring do is half disguised. Behind the smile, my beak is grinding. So he's talking about his mask here. He's saying that when he puts that mask, that facade on, saying that he puts on a smile, even when he puts on a smile for Blitz when he comes round, it's a genuine smile, but behind that, he is happy to see Blitz whenever they meet up, but the reason he's been putting it off for so long is because every time he sees him, he can't help but think and dwell on the thoughts that he has that need to be expelled, that need to get out there, but he hasn't found the right moment to tell him, but now he's finally worked up the courage, so now he's got all those butterflies. But it really makes you, the viewer, think, right? Because all these times that we've seen him since maybe episode 7, when he probably had a realisation after that episode, well, it wasn't an episode of him, it was a night, but <laughs> whatever, he would have dwelled on it. So since then, all the episodes that we've seen him interacting with Blitz in, which isn't too many, but there is some of it there, well, in the show, it's been months, so we can build a picture of that in our mind, right? To see how it builds up over time. Though it's crazy to look back on now and think, all those times that we see Stolz and Blitz on screen, and when you use your mind to imagine all those other times, that they meet up off screen. It really makes you think and realize that we never knew that Stolas was having this inner conflict behind that mask of that smile when he sees Blitz and stuff like that and the way that he speaks to him in that very sexual tone that he does and has done for ages because Blitz is used to it. So whenever he sees Blitz, he's going to keep on that facade that wasn't a facade previously. It was part of him and the way that he acted around Blitz. But now Blitz is so used to it, he had to put on that front to make it seem like nothing was up while inside he was having this inner conflict. He was very hollow and shallow inside. He just wanted to get this out because it was all building up. And now the day has come and he's absolutely freaking out about it. Never minding, I swore I wouldn't dwell on the divorce. So this really caught me off guard. I don't really understand this as much that he dwelled on the divorce. And I think that's maybe because he may have thought back to seeing stars or when he was going around chasing for Octavia. I think that the pressure that this decision has had on him and his thoughts about Blitz has made him think about the divorce and if it was a right deal. Like even though he knows deep down that he wouldn't have been better with Stella because he's not attracted to her, obviously. But it still makes him think, would he and especially Via have been better if he stayed with Stella, which is obviously not true for the Stolas part. Maybe Via would have benefited from it because there was no conflict and inner thoughts that she's hiding from them all. But without Via for Stolas, he would have to sleep in the same bed with her every night to prove to Via that they are still in love and all that when they are quite obviously not. It would really be a detriment to him because really Stella didn't want the divorce because it hurt her ego. And supposedly, which is in the culture of the Goetia anyway, so they would have thought this, made everyone around her think that she was less of a demon, less of a family member because her husband cheated with a lower class, which Stella was probably not very open about talking about, about talking about, though she had to because Blitz just screamed it to the entire family when he woke up from it. He was like, sorry, I effed your husband. It's like, what? Are you kidding me? She probably would have kept it in the dark if not and just abused him even more, which is horrible. But the fact that he's now weighing it up to think, especially for his daughter, because like I said, Blitz is making him think and he's thinking, should I have done this? It was a bad decision, wasn't it? Because it's got me in all this drama over and over. And now I just have these feelings that I can't explain and they're all deep down, deep rooted in 
inside of me, it's really hard to think, was it worth that night with him? Because now he's unsure if Blitz will ever change, if he'll ever be able to love Blitz like he truly does and get that reciprocated. So he's trying to fall back into that comfort in quotes because in comparison to what he's thinking now, he's never felt such strong emotions. So his situation with Stella seems a lot more tame and placid than the one with Blitz because there's less to think about. It's more just put on a show for Via and just try and act. Whereas with Blitz, he has to act, but also take all the crap from Blitz because he can't truly tell him how he feels for fear of judgment or Blitz just straight up leaving if the feelings aren't reciprocated. So he has to keep the deal going. It's a really complex situation and it's amazing to me how accurate this is because really anyone would dwell on the past if they're having a bad situation in the present. They would always think, oh, it was so much better back then. Even though I was in a horrible situation, it was probably even more, it was even more horrible than it is now. You know, this thing can be healed and probably will be by the end of the series. Whereas Stella and his relationship definitely could not have healed because there was nothing there to build on. The only foundation they had was they were arranged. That's pretty much it. And they had to produce an heir. So they just had to do what they had to do. They never wanted it. Very cool and honestly accurate. For my own health, I'll remind myself. I just realized how annoying the YouTube overlay is going to be for you guys. If you want to pause, you don't know which one's yours and which one's mine. I'm sorry. I'll try and fix it next time. That when I see him, I know that it won't feel so tough. So he's actually getting happy now because he's empowered, even though he's got all that anxiety inside him and afraid of what Blitz's reaction is going to be. It's a mix of emotions because he's seeing the good in it now, which is what's great because he woke up. I feel like this is also reflective of the environment because when you wake up in the morning and you're sluggish and you realize you have something, you instantly jump to the negatives. So he thinks of what will calm him down. So he puts on a bath. So it's honestly symbolic and another display of accuracy that I like, you know, it's your environment and the position you're in at the time, whether you're comfortable or uncomfortable physically and mentally, they both play hand in hand. If you're uncomfortable mentally, something physically will also not feel as good. But sometimes, like a bath, something that you enjoyed previously, will overpower your mental state and just turn you to complete positive. That's why people listen to music when they're depressed, right? Pe you know, people, I'm not saying depressed people listen to music. I listen to music, I'm not depressed. But like, people who are having a bad time often find solace in music. It can be anything. It can be a bath like Stola. Stola doesn't listen to music now, but Octavia does. It's a complete spectrum, right? But for a prime example and a very popular example in media and this show, listening to music is a good escape because it takes you to another world, the realm of your imagination, which you won't think happens from music, but have you ever really listened to music? Your imagination takes a hold of you. You get in the moment. Even if you're not really imagining anything, you feel empowered purely from the music you listen to, or you feel calm from the music, whatever genre you listen to, you feel an emotion from. You're not just going to feel neutral from listening to something. You can feel love, empowerment, motivation, calmness, hatred in some senses, but you never feel neutral. Music always brings emotion. So that's why if you're having a negative time, people tend to move to something positive, such as music or a bath, that will calm them down and or make them feel empowered. You know, something positive. Calmness is positive. Positivity is obviously positive. And empowerment and motivation feels amazing. Though it doesn't last forever, like calmness can last a lot longer than motivation. Once you have it, motivation is one of the best drugs, right? Because it's a productive drug. It's rare, but once you spark it, if you have the right routine to keep it going, it works, right? It gives you that adrenaline. And adrenaline doesn't just relieve you of physical pain. It also relieves you of some mental pain because you're so in that moment and involved that you're really focused on that, that you can't focus on anything else with your mind. So I like the portrayal here. He wakes up sluggish, instantly thinking about his anxiety and everything that he's had for this day. As that wears off because he puts the bath on something that calms him down comfort, he gets in that bath and now he's empowered. He's like, yes, I'm in an environment that I enjoy being in has always expressed positivity to me. And now I feel empowered because it's a positive environment that I'm in. Really good. I'll believe him and not the voice that says I'm not enough. So that says a lot about Stolas, doesn't it? You know, he has that voice. We don't really think that. Unless you look really deep into it, most viewers by this point will just think he's this, not pompous, but very, I hate to use this word again, but flamboyant kind of guy, a very sexual person. And he's very upfront with what he wants and doesn't give much more information apart from that. We can see that he's broken in episode seven and when he's upset and you know, you see moments of that, but the fact that it flips in episode two, complete opposite. It's a juxtaposition there where you're so caught off guard by Stolas suddenly being nice to blitz like nothing just happened that you forget that he was upset in episode seven and then you get here and you're like wait yeah because he got upset in episode seven so why would he not have something beneath the surface that we don't know about so it's not just the situation with blitz it's also he wants to feel wanted and i'm pretty sure he says that in the trailer doesn't he, he says i want someone to want me because blitz never wanted him he always forced him to come round for the arrangement in quotes and it's horrible because stolas is in the wrong for that but the fact that he's realized that now and notices the fact that he can change 
change things and he's happy about that, but he's also like, if I change things that this voice inside my head that's telling me I'm not good enough, that's telling me I'm doing bad, that I'm breaking blitz will go because I've eliminated the biggest negative thing in my life, which is my thoughts that I'm keeping blitz in a position that he doesn't want to be in. So if I just give him free will and a choice there and let him be set free, like he says at the end, that that voice in my head will go away. But the fact of the matter is, no matter whether it was a positive reaction or a negative one, the voice would still be there. Even if Blitz said yes and expressed the fact that he loves Stolas, he would still be unsure. He'd be like, is he just saying that? Is he saying that? What, what's going on? He's always going to second guess himself because this voice has been in his head for so long that it's not just going to go. It doesn't matter how many happy pills you take, Stolas. Anyone. It doesn't matter how many medication that you're prescribed. The voice won't just go away. You need to calm down and do whatever is necessary in your specific situation to calm that voice in your head. You know, it can ruin things. And you don't want that, do you? Just take your time with it, and that's what Stolas should do. But no one's there to tell him that because he thinks no one wants to speak to him, no one wants him, but he's not really gone out there. He's just stuck with Blitz, and his family he's not really connected to simply because he's dating an imp, or dating in quotes. People think, you know, he's sleeping with an imp. That's just not allowed, apparently, because of the class difference and the classism. So the elites, and how Stolas bows in season two, episode one, and his dad just hits him. Paimon's like, no, he bows to us, idiot. You can tell from there the seeds are growing in him, where he feels ashamed of loving Blitz because of the impact that that will have. So he's afraid that Blitz won't love him back, but triumphant about the fact that he'll get rid of that voice in his head, which he won't. But he also has some deep-rooted feelings, which are, if I do get with Blitz, that voice will still be there anyway, because not only is he second-guessing the answer of Blitz, but he's also thinking, now I'm officially dating this guy that I really want to be with, what will my family's reaction be, or my relative's reaction be? Will they banish me when they find out? You know, we have that episode, I think that one's gonna be mastermind, right? They seem to call Stola, so maybe that is about Blitz. And the fact that Blitz tries to protect him in that episode, which is seemingly that episode because of Satan, who seems to be an elite, and the fact they're having an elite meeting and Mammon's there, I think, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I wonder if we'll ever get a Lucifer cameo. Just the difference in teams, you know, there's a different team and people working on it, so my guess is probably no. Maybe as a juxtaposition to what's said in the Bible or demonology book or whatever, the books of blah de blah how they say that the main three are like Beelzebub, Satan, and Lucifer. Maybe Maybe it's Satan, Beelzebub, and Mammon, so we might see B again. But I won't see that happening, seeing Kesha. But anyway, <laughs> that's off track. Either way, something's going to happen with Stolas in episode whatever, whenever it shows up with Visago. And I feel like Visago will be very... The fact that he's going to summon Blitz, maybe he is a bad guy, maybe he's seen as a villain. But I think there's a possibility there. There always is that Visago's not that bad of a guy, you know. I, I actually kind of like his design, so maybe I'm being a bit biased, but whatever. Anyway. No need for an arrangement. It can just be him and me, I'll set us free. So he's saying he'll set him free or set us free, like he said previously, that's his goal, is to set Blitz free and himself free, because he supposedly will be freed from his mental prison, and Blitz will be free from his arrangement. So it's two things there that are expected to be benefits in Stolas' eyes. And the fact that he's happy about the no need for an arrangement, and he's just brushing himself down, cleaning up, and the fact that he has a brush instead of, you know, a sponge or whatever, because it would stick, right? So, cool detail, because he's got hair or fur or whatever, so that's a good thing. Shout out to the animation team, love y'all. But yeah, it's amazing to to see how happy he is for this situation, even how bad it goes. He's still got perseverance, despite the negative thoughts that he has beforehand. How perfect it could be when I see him tonight. He's saying it's gonna be perfect. He uses the two bubbles and combines them as one. One being him, one being Blitz in his eyes. And he merges them together and they become one. That's what he wants. He wants them to become one, to become a couple, which is becoming one, right? So he's genuinely looking forward to it now that he's highlighted the positives. He woke up in a stressed mood, calmed himself with that bath. And even though he's a bit apprehensive later on waiting for him, he keeps his composure, remains calm, completely, amazingly gets his point across without any stuttering or minimal amount. So stop Stolas is doing really well now. He is putting on a front a lot of the time, but the fact that he's on his own and he's singing, even if it's just for the show, I'm guessing he did possibly sing. He would have sung, right? That's how it works. They sing in universe. Amazing job from the writers there. Really good. We'll get to the voice actors later. I'm not going to analyze this. There is so much going on, but I will note the fact that Blitz has days on his calendar for everyone when he hangs out with Fizz and stuff like that, and then Moon, and also him scrubbing himself out of pictures. Unfortunate. I'm guessing that Moxie picture has Blitz next to him and he's cut it out. It's horrible stuff. It's really upsetting. See him tonight. All right, all right. It's 
been a while since he begged for attention. Uh so he does think that, really. He thinks he's begging for attention, but also he uses it as a line that he could just throw in there. It's more of a joke to himself. Also, I don't like the fourth wall break blitz. Please, can we not do that ever again? Anyway, this show's great. Are we okay? <laughs> Can't really say. I'm getting by by avoiding his questions. So, so Blitz is saying that he's getting by by avoiding his questions. He's like, are we okay? I mean, I can't really tell. It's a mix between both because I'm torn. And quite frankly, he doesn't have much knowledge of social cues to understand that Stolas doesn't want this. And the fact that he's always putting on that front, there was no way for Blitz to know, which I'll explain in my analysis of the last scene later on down the line. But I do really feel for Blitz because he doesn't actually understand because Stolas doesn't show it. He doesn't give hints. This is the only time where he notices something's off with Stolas. Complicated. I hate when it's complicated. Why do I always end up in situations that are complicated? Now he's just going off at himself. He's like, why am I always in situations that are complicated? He's questioning himself and he's beating himself down. He always does. That's all that Blitz does. And he does it in the trailer when you hear that line where he's like, he makes everyone's lives worse. He very much beats himself down and thinks of himself as nothing. Despite how many good things happen, him making up with Fizz, him doing some nefarious things in season one, episode eight. But eventually the positive outcome is Luna calls him dad and sees him as someone who's respected in her eyes, especially for a teenage mind, which is very much a teenager, despite the fact that she's around 22. Once she sees Blitz doing something that she sees as respectable in her teenage mind, she's like, that's my dad, and then calls him dad at the end when he's upset and very much under the influence so he won't remember it. But still, nonetheless, he's doing great. He's improved so much. He just keeps pushing people away. He's brought someone back in. He brought Fizz back in. He's bringing Luna closer. He's being more respectful in a very weird way to Moxie and Millie, allowing Moxie to call him Blitz and not Boss. But it's honestly so sad to see him beating himself down so much despite how much he's improved. He doesn't understand the amount of things that he's done. Someone needs to tell him. He needs someone who's going to support him. And Stolas will be that, but he's still caught up in his own shit, so there's no definite chance that that'll happen soon. Here I go again, getting in my head, so I'll focus on the sexy stuff instead. I... So he uses that as a mask, doesn't he? He uses that as a way to escape. Very much how Stolas gets in the bath to escape from his negative thoughts about the meeting and induce positive thoughts. Blitz just puts a mask on without any form of comfort because he doesn't really have much comfort and calls it a day, moves on. But as we'll see now, to see the differences in their viewpoints on the situation is honestly really depressing. I see. When I see him, I'm gonna do that thing he likes. So Stolas is very much frolicking in this idea of seeing Blitz and finally setting him free, whereas Blitz is none the wiser, so he just thinks it's another meeting for sex again. Honestly, for the positive side of things for my channel, I will say they are having fun. I will say that Blitz has got a smile on his face, genuine or not. He does enjoy doing that stuff because at the end of the day, he does enjoy being with Stolas, but he won't admit it. So he will be happy with him no matter what. I will change no need to change things. I'll just bring the rope and spice. So this is where it fully cements it, right? Stolas wants to change. He wants stuff to change. Blitz is like, no need to change anything. The arrangement's working just fine as it is. He doesn't know what Stolas has in store for him because he never knew of an Asmodian crystal being given to an imp because he had to force it off someone and he just commanded him to open the portal. So really, that's a really small thing in episode five of season two. He forces the incubus to open the portal because he doesn't think he can do it himself when at the end of the day, if he had one assigned to him, she never knew about, he can use it himself. But he very much thought it was out of the realm of possibility that he would ever get an Asmodian crystal. Seeing how Ozzy views him as well, very much from Blitz's perspective as a newly rekindled sort of friend, he's still apprehensive about Blitz being back in Fizz's life. And Blitz kind of gets that and thinks there's no chance that I'm going to get an Asmodian crystal. He doesn't really care about Asmodeus's opinion. But when it comes to a thought about the crystal, he doesn't think he'll ever get it. So the fact that Stolas gives it to him is very out of the blue. So it would be very possible that Blitz would view the situation as no need to change things because there's nothing he thinks could be changed because it's out of his realm of possibility. Insane. Oh, we've got a nice arrangement. And Stolas running out of the happy pills as well. He doesn't have that. He's not got a crutch anymore. The only thing he can do now, roll with it. And it's working out just fine. We'll keep it light. So he's saying that it's working out just fine. There's no problem. He wants to keep it light. No true commitment. Even though deep down he most likely wants a commitment but thinks Stolas is too elite to want that from him. So he never thinks about it. He just thinks about what they're getting on with. You know, we'll keep it this way because that's just a dream of mine. It's a dream to be with Stolas and I'll never be able to be with him. But at this point, I don't think he truly understands how deep his feelings go for Stolas. And he eventually will, I guess. Why is Stolas shaped like this? Why is that kind of like Blitz's head? <laughs> I don't know. I'll fucking die alone if this goes bad when I see him tonight. 
So Stolas has a mood swing, which is just kind of casual expected. He's afraid of dying alone. He wants someone to hold when he passes, but I think he's immortal. So what the hell, dude? Or lives very long because obviously he wouldn't mention death if he didn't live very long. Though I do think he's been reminded of his mortality when Striker got him. So it's a new thought in his head. Like I could die at any moment. I want to die with Blitz or knowing that Blitz loves me. That I'm in a nice relationship. That I had a good life. That I fulfilled myself and did everything that I wanted to do. And that's how we all want to die. We want to die fulfilled and knowing that we did everything we wanted to do. It's like, well, there's nothing else left for me to do. I'm happy now. I'll be happy to die at any moment. Could get hit by a car. Could get scratched up by a kitten and die bleeding out on the floor. As long as I knew that I'd done everything in my life. That's, that's cool, bro. That's chill. And also the tone in which they both say, when I see him tonight, Stolas is very musical and he's the only one really singing. Blitz is just rhyming. Not really rapping, it's more rhyming, right? Blitz is just like, when I see him tonight, like it's casual. Whereas Stolas has seen it in such a dramatic light, seeing as he knows what the stakes are here and how dramatic it really is. So to see both viewpoints in one encapsulated moment allows us to compare the two and be like, okay, I understand this now. One is severely unaware and the other He's so hyper aware that he's overthinking and questioning every single thought that he has. Am I doing something I can't take back? Relax. Would he want me if he was free? We're fine. And if he's only here as a prisoner, what kind of monster does that make me? That is a lot to digest. Stolas is once again having a mood swing and he's questioning himself. Like I said, he overthinks. So he went from optimistic and happy to now really thinking about it. He went from anxiety to happiness and optimism to more anxiety and fear. Now to deep questioning. It's just an array of emotions. He doesn't know how to deal with in such a short amount of time, especially with how close it really is. It's only a day away to him. When I say only, that's because it's so close. I mean, it's not really a day, it's 12 hours hours, which seems like a long time, but to him, who's waiting for it, it's very much seeming such a short amount of time to get everything done and get himself ready. So the fact that he's got all these thoughts racing and he doesn't know how to deal with them is, honestly, it's heartbreaking. We've not even got to the end yet. You know, tune in for that, I guess. And the fact that he says, what kind of monster does that make me if he's keeping here as a prisoner? He's now putting himself down. He's doing what Blitz does and putting himself down because he's saying that he's a monster if he doesn't do this. So if he didn't succeed and Blitz just kept on with the arrangement, he'd think of himself as a monster, despite the fact that if Blitz chose that decision, he'd be like, now I'm fine with the arrangement, we'll keep it. He's like, really? Yeah, yeah, we'll keep the arrangement, I'll have your book. And it's like, though that would be an outcome that Blitz would possibly choose in another reality, right? Because that would be an alternative. Because if Stolas didn't open up to him about the Asmodian Crystal, he would have just said, yeah, no, just keep it the same. There's no reason for me to have this. We'll just keep the arrangement, I'm fine with that. Because really, he just wants to be in Stolas' company. So that's why he gets so hit when Stolas explains that to him in a serious manner and explains that he cares for him. He thinks that he's not enough and he'll realize he'll never see Stolas again. Oh, that's what he perceives. So the fact that Stolas would view himself as a monster if he didn't go through with this, and even if he had a bad outcome, which I don't know if the outcome that we got would make him view himself as a monster because he has set him free, though a negative reaction has occurred. If Blitz had just kept going, he would have been completely broken inside Stolas. So I guess it's a kind of a good thing that Blitz took him upon the offer because for anything otherwise, he would have broke himself down. And you can see Blitz as well. You can see his expression. He's saying to relax, and then he says that he's fine. But look at that smile. That's a broken smile, and his tail twisting and contorting, he's very much in a position where he is having an inner monologue that we're not very aware of. Because Blitz is so good at putting up a front, even for us, the viewers, watching a show, the writers have written it so it's still in character. Even though Stolas is pouring his heart out to us in a song, Blitz would never do that to anyone. Even us, who aren't even in their universe, the writers know Blitz's personality and say, no, Blitz wouldn't, even to any higher being, admit his faults or admit the fact that he's having some anxiety. And I also don't think that him and Stolas ever knew how to deal with anxiety because they never grew up in an environment that was very loving and welcoming because he had shit parents. Both of them did. So they don't know how to deal with their emotions that well. So that's why they're just such a mess, both of them. They've not grown up with this knowledge. Even though Stolas read loads of books, hell isn't very big on therapy. So they would never find out about this stuff until, you know, in conversation, hearing about the word therapy, like, oh, what's that? They still don't know how to use it or how valuable it actually is. That really puts into perspective the world as well. The way they were brought up ties into who they are today because that's what happens to all of us. I know it's the past that makes the future, but the fact that our childhood can affect us so dearly, even in these little ways when we've grown up and ultimately learn how to dismiss our trauma, or hopefully so, it's still deep rooted down there, but we know how to put a face over it. When we get genuine emotions that we never learn,
learn how to deal with, you know, we can suppress the trauma. We know how to do that. But when the emotions pop up, we're like, what do we do? Because we never were taught how to do that. Whereas there's so much trauma in Blitz's life that he knows how to suppress the trauma, which includes the emotions. But when the emotions come back up, the emotions are completely separate to the trauma. The trauma is the event. The emotions are the feelings that he feels when he experiences that thought of the trauma. He can suppress the trauma and the feelings that come with it. But if those feelings come on their own, he was never taught how to deal with that. Nor was Stolas. All the above applies. So you can see how broken they both are and both perspectives. Honestly, there's no one in the wrong here. And if someone was to say, if someone's going to go in the comments and say, if you had to objectively pick who's in the wrong, I would say Blitz, simply because he acted on it in a very verbal way. Whereas Stolas was very in the background. He never showed Blitz any sign of discomfort. And even if he did, Blitz wouldn't know how to adapt to that and change. Even though Blitz may be more in the wrong in a traditional sense, when it comes to a courtroom, experienced individuals speak about it. They would say Blitz was probably guilty if he had to pick one. But that only reason is because Blitz was the one who was physical with it and verbal with it, whereas Stolas kept it all deep-rooted inside and used his mask to express a calm demeanor, whereas Blitz's mask is used to express a confident facade and a very overbearing one that criticizes every little thing about everyone just because he's unstable in himself. So it's just because of the personalities of the two characters that Blitz is more verbal with it. Doesn't mean that Stolas is in the clear or any less in the wrong. They've both done terrible things to each other without knowing because both of them never knew that the other person had feelings. So they were just in this weird situation. That's why they treated each other like this and never said anything. It's really unfortunate, honestly. And if he's only here as a prisoner, what kind of monster does that make me? My entire life's been written in stone and about. <laughs> okay, Blitz, sorry. I said that on my reaction, but he's saying that his entire life's been written in stone, being that he was born to grow up, mate, produce an heir, and then rule with his power. That was his life. He had a plan, or someone had a plan for his life. Whereas Blitz has never had that. No one wanted him to be a big performer for ages. They would just use him as a performer until he was too old, or until an accident occurred, and then they just kick him out. That, ultimately, is what would have happened, whereas Stolas has this whole story written for himself in-universe. Obviously, there's a whole story written for him, but in-universe, there's a story written for Stolas and a guideline for his life. Some things that he has to achieve, because he will never decay. Stolas will live for so long that for him to fully decay it would take eons. Therefore, there was no definite plan. Keep going until you die. Blitz's in the circus was unknowingly work until you can't work anymore or work until you're not valuable. So the fact that Stolas has a plan that he's aware of, which pushes him out of his comfort zone into this uncharted territory that he's never learned how to deal with or go about because he's so used to following the plan and just being who he's supposed to be, who he was written to be. So to see that personified here, honestly wonderful. Great job. Taught me that I could choose he deserves the choice to stay or go Though it scares me to think what I'd lose so Stolas is very upfront there where Blitz has this choice to stay or go, but he is afraid to think of what he may lose by making this decision. But he knows it's an important decision that he has to make, but he's still afraid of what will happen. His relatives may criticize him and the thought of the law, is this legal? Should I be really doing this? What will happen? Will there be a punishment for me dating Blitz? It's the same thing. Because obviously lust is a sin, so seeing that as lust would be completely fine, but seeing them being actually genuinely in love would be so unusual and there's a chance, a very high chance in fact, like we see with that being in the trailer who's supposedly Satan, seeing that they're a disgrace. And I think that's him in the trailer who's putting the foot on Blitz, stomping on him and Stolas, and he's trying to protect him. So there really are repercussions. So I'm guessing we'll delve into that later on down the line. Can't wait to lose ourselves in nasty sex and make that bird squawk. So now, as funny as that is, he's using it as a way to cope. Like he says that, oh, we're fine, or it's fine. He's trying to play it off like he was at the start of the song, where Blitz was thinking about all these thoughts and getting in his own head and went, it's fine, you know, we're going to lose ourselves. And that's why he says we're going to lose ourselves in it. It's not like he's there to enjoy it. You know, you can lose yourself having fun. You know, let's lose ourselves having fun playing some basketball. That's not really a usual thing you'd say. You'd say, let's go and have fun playing basketball, not lose ourselves. Lose ourselves is a very specific phrasing, which amplifies the perspective of this is used as an escape, which it is. It definitely is for these two. Really Stolas is saying that they really must converse, which is further hinting at the fact that this has to be done. Stolas sees it as an essential thing, despite how scared he is of the repercussions of it. He knows it has to be done. So saying that we really must converse is just another way of saying that they must have this conversation and it must happen because otherwise he'd still be stuck in this loop and Blitz would be in a situation that he doesn't want to be in. Like him sucking my oh, this is the worst. Now that's really creative, isn't it? The way that they use that and how they use it again in a minute. Honestly, great job to everyone on the team. You did re 
really good. And the fact that the guy from Lululand or Lulu, what? No, Lululand. The fact that he's on there as well, missing. Neat little detail. But Blitz seems to get really caught in the him. You know, I'm not gonna repeat it, but he seems to really enjoy the thought because he wants to be with Stolas and he enjoys his time with Stolas as much as he tries to play it off cool. He does want to go and he's genuinely interested because the more that they started going and meeting up, the more the connection grew because in episode four, he's like, whatevs on the texts. But I feel like over time, that's grown more and more. And now it's just like, dude, I just want to go and see Stolas. Like, I'm genuinely excited. And that's why he dresses up and everything. It's crazy to think that from Aussies to episode four to episode eight, Blitz has grown so attached to Stolas and so welcoming of his presence. He really has grown, but no one's there to tell him. He doesn't understand all the great things he's done. Waiting for the shoe to drop. Who needs words when you got a mouth full of them? Again, extremely creative, but also Blitz is saying there that he doesn't need to words. He doesn't need to explain. He'll just move on and it's whatever to him. But Stolz is saying, come to your senses. Like, you have to ground yourself, stay confident, and keep this happiness level. Because you want to show up for Blitz, or when he shows up to you, you want to express yourself as someone who is calm, collected, and really interested and very devoted to him. You want to express in ways that you never would do if you had the anxiety holding you back. And that's what he does. He expresses himself by coming to his senses and being able to show his emotion to Blitz. And that's great. I think that's really good. That's amazing for them. And amazing for Stolas. The fact that he can have that self-control despite how fragile of a grip he has on it. The fact that he keeps slipping away and slipping back into this mental state, but he can pull himself back every time. That's just further growth. Great job, Stolas. <laughs> I'll do that thing with my tongue where I... <laughs> I don't know why that was funny. It was supposed to be funny. What am I saying? Again, the, the two perspectives, Stolas wants to be worthy of his love and trust. He wants to be worthy of that, to earn it from Blitz. And for him to make that decision where it's not about Stolas's opinion, it's about Blitz's. Stolas wants Blitz to understand that, and when Blitz does understand that, or if he does ever fully understand that, because he don't think he really fully understands, but if he ever comes to that full realization, he'd be like, I've got a choice. Like, he wants me to stay, and he's very happy and accommodating to me, but he also wants me to have that final say. Blitz just needs to understand that and it's really hard for him, so don't beat Blitz down. He's honestly trying his best because his life has been so tough, just like Stolz's has with his marriage and everything. And the fact that he has to manage a young kid in addition to that, it's horrible for both of them, really. And I am, side note, really honored to be able to make this video, to be in a position where I can record this and edit it and whatever, get it out, and people will see it and hopefully learn something from it. Like, that's just a privilege to me. Even though it's me doing all the work, it's still a privilege. And I'm so unbelievably lucky to have this microphone and everything to be able to speak and broadcast my thoughts. Not broadcasting any screams yet, but I am broadcasting my opinions and hopefully my positive views. So yeah, thank you for everything. Especially for 2,000 subscribers. Thank you, thank you. God, guys can be choked up over here. Tonight cannot come soon. Yeah. <laughs> so Stolas is saying this night cannot come soon enough and Blitz is saying he will come soon enough. There's two different perspectives and it's just for the final line between them two where they both have that sync. It's the same thing when they synced previously in the song. Same thing now. Stolas and Blitz have views that are completely adjacent to each other. They are parallel. They're not getting any closer or any further away. Blitz is here. Stolas is here. And they're just in a constant. They'll never meet in this song at least. That's how they frame it. To so hear that one final time, song designers, vocal bloody blahs every Everyone did a great job there. Really good at tying it together. And now Stolz's final lament. But when I see him, will it be tender or be tough? There we go again. Will it be tender or be tough? When he says tender, he points to the top of the flower, since that is where it flourishes at its most. But then when he says tough, he moves to the bottom of the flower, where it is at its most tough. Cool symbolism there. But what he's actually saying is he's conflicted and torn between will it go well or not. He's still got this feeling, because obviously it's not just going to go away. He's going to be thinking about it all day. It's just going to get worse and worse as he becomes closer and closer to the moment. So really, we know this. Stolas is just completely broken, torn between two sides, doesn't know which one is going to occur, doesn't know which one's better or worse. Worse, whether it's good that it goes well or good that it goes bad. Even though it's quite obvious which one's better, he's still torn between the two. He doesn't know which one he would prefer. It really shows his inner conflict here, especially with the flower symbolism as well. Great. Will it please him or will I just be fucking it all up? Now he's really going for that musical element. I think this is just more amazing vocal performance from Bryce here. Honestly, dude, this is so good. Listen to this. Can this be? Or am I still naive? I'll set us free. 
sorry, I said to listen, but it's questioning here whether he's too naive or whether it will actually be a relationship. Could it flourish into what he wants it to be? Or is he just thinking well over his head here? Is he too big for his boots? Is his ego too expanded to understand the logic? And the answer is no, it really can work. But the way that Stolas goes about it isn't really the right way since he's not given any hints or anything in the past to insinuate that. So it really comes out of the blue to blitz and that's why he doesn't have time to think. And Stolas doesn't give him time to think because he walks off. He needs to listen. Anyway, that's for the other analysis. He really is a mix between naive and believing that this relationship can exist because it definitely can. Whatever it may be, when I see him tonight. And the way that it silences, he's very much in a higher and more expressive, louder tone. And then he just goes down to a whisper. It really does a great job at encapsulating this moment where that flower is the last thing that you see, which the flower has flourished, which means that Blitz and Stolas, they'll eventually flourish and it will hopefully work out. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Click a video on screen that best it's you. The one on the right was picked by YouTube just for you. YouTube picked that. You should probably click it, but you can also click this one on the left because this one on the left is my latest video. The analysis for the final bit of the episode will be coming out. Also, so should I do review? Should I review my thoughts on the episode? Let me know. I'd love to do that because I don't really get to analyze the other parts here. But anyway, I'll see you guys later. Stay positive. Goodbye.